All right, get ready, because today we're diving deep into the Indonesian language. Sounds good. Want to know how Indonesian became the language of a nation? Right. You're thinking like a true language enthusiast. I like it. Most people Rectally. just see a language as, you know, a way to communicate. But you're right. Yeah. It's so much more than that. It's about identity. It's about history. Yeah. It's about culture. Mm -hmm. Like all packed into this thing that we use every single day. Exactly. And speaking of history. Yeah. I was really struck by how Indonesian rose to prominence like it did, mm -hmm. even surpassing languages that were more widely spoken at the time, mm -hmm. like Javanese. That's a really crucial point because you see, picking a national language for a country as diverse as Indonesia, oh my gosh, yeah. with over 700 languages spoken, was uh, a very delicate task. Choosing mm -hmm. Javanese, while it was the most spoken at the time, could have been seen as prioritizing one group over others. It's so fascinating how political considerations play a role in these decisions about language. Totally. You know, it reminds me of how the text mentioned the Youth Pledge of 1928. Right. It wasn't just a pledge to the nation. It was a pledge to the Indonesian language. Exactly. Which, I mean, that just speaks volumes. It does. About this connection okay. between language and this national identity. Absolutely. Now, c consider this. Even before it was chosen as the national language, okay. Indonesian, or a form of it, hmm. was already acting as a unifying force across the archipelago. You're talking about its roots as like a lingua franca. Yes. This trading language that connected all these diverse communities. Precisely. Indonesian has this fascinating history yeah. interwoven with trade and cultural exchange. Wow. It actually evolved from Old Malay, oh, yeah. which dating back to the 7th century, wow. served as a common tongue for commerce across Southeast Asia, much like how English functions globally today. Wow, that's a great comparison. This widespread use gave it a head start <laughs> yeah. in becoming the language of unity. So it wasn't just like plucked out of thin air. Right. There was already this foundation exactly. of shared understanding. Yes. But how did we get from old Malay right. to the standardized Indonesian that's spoken today? Yeah. There must have been some major linguistic shifts that happened along the way. There were. Think of it like this. Indonesian didn't evolve from a single source. Okay. It came from a blend of what we call high Malay and low Malay. Oh, interesting. Imagine the refined language used in the royal courts okay. versus the everyday language spoken in like the bustling marketplaces. Gotcha, gotcha. Indonesian took elements from both, okay. creating this language that was both dignified and accessible. So it's like a linguistic balancing act. Exactly. Incorporating the formal and the informal. The text actually mentioned a debate around this with influences from classical Malay right. and something called Malayu Pasar, mm -hmm. which, if my Indonesian serves me correctly, means market Malay. That's right. It's incredible to think how all these different threads came together. It is. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Okay. Imagine Indonesian as a tapestry woven with threads from not just different dialects of Malay, mm. but also from languages across the globe. You're talking about external influences, right? Yes. The text mentioned Sanskrit, Arabic, Dutch. Seem like quite the mix. It truly is. Yeah. These aren't just borrowed words. They're windows right. into Indonesia's vibrant past. Let's take Dutch, for example. Okay. Their colonial presence left this undeniable mark yeah. on Indonesian vocabulary with words like policy for police oh, or so. qualitas for quality okay. still used today. It's amazing how language can be like this living record it is. of a nation's history. Mm -hmm. It's like... Indonesian has been collecting these linguistic souvenirs yeah. from all the cultures it's interacted with. That's a great way to put it. Now, consider the influence of Sanskrit, okay. which actually arrived through centuries of contact with India. Mm -hmm. You'll find its traces yeah. in words related to religion, art, and philosophy. Wow. Even in the mottos of the Indonesian National Police and Armed Forces. That's remarkable. Yeah. So we've got Dutch, Sanskrit. Mm. What about Arabic? Right. I imagine its influence is probably tied to the spread of Islam in Indonesia. You're spot on. Arabic loanwords are deeply embedded in Indonesian, yeah. particularly in religious contexts, but also in everyday life. Words like dunya for oh. world or iklan for advertisement have Arabic origins, wow. reflecting that intertwined nature of language, religion, and culture. This is incredible. Right. From Malay roots to Dutch... Sanskrit and Arabic influences, it sounds like Indonesian has one diverse vocabulary. Oh, absolutely. And to think its evolution didn't stop there. 
You're absolutely right. Indonesian's story definitely doesn't end there. Right. In fact, its modern evolution is a testament to its dynamism. Oh, right. Just think about yeah. the influx of English words in our globalized world. Yeah, for sure. Indonesian, like many languages, yeah. has embraced these new terms, especially in fields like technology and business. Yeah, that makes total sense. Languages have to adapt to the times. Right. I am curious about something, though. Yeah. The text mentioned that Indonesian itself has influenced other languages. It's true. Which kind of surprised me. It's fascinating, especially yeah. when you consider Indonesia's colonial past. Right, right. We talked about the Dutch influence on Indonesian, yeah. but remarkably, Indonesian ultimately superseded Dutch right. as the official language after centuries of colonization. That's right. And the text highlighted how unusual that is. Yeah. Many post-colonial countries yeah. still rely very heavily on the language of their colonizers. Exactly. In many mm -hmm. cases, the colonizer's language maintains a strong presence in government, right. education, even just like everyday life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in Indonesia, Indonesian rose to prominence as the symbol of national identity wow, and yeah. unity. Yeah. It's a powerful example of a language reclaiming its place. It's like Indonesian found its voice again after all those years. Exactly. And its influence spread beyond Indonesia's borders, didn't it? It did. Okay. It took East Timor, for example. Right. Under Indonesian rule, Indonesian was the official language. Right. And even today, it's still used alongside Titum and Portuguese. Wow. And here's another fascinating tidbit. Indonesian is even used okay. by international broadcasters like the VOA and BBC wow. for reaching Malay-speaking audiences. Wow. That speaks volumes oh, of, yeah, yeah. at its reach and intelligibility. Yeah. So it seems like Indonesian's rise to prominence mm. wasn't just happenstance. Right. There were these deliberate efforts to solidify its position. Absolutely. Right from its inception as the national language. Yeah. The Indonesian government implemented strategic language planning policies. Okay. They made Indonesian the language of education, government, media. Yeah. Essentially weaving it into the fabric of daily life. That's quite the comprehensive strategy. It is. I imagine it wasn't like a seamless transition for yeah. everyone. Right. Indonesia has such a rich tapestry of regional languages. Mm -hmm. Did everyone just like switch over to Indonesian overnight? It wasn't quite overnight, of course. Mm -hmm. However, these policies, yeah. coupled with Indonesian's pre-existing role as a lingua franca, mm -hmm. created this powerful catalyst for language shift. Quite. Think about it. Yeah. To participate in government, education, or even engage with mass media, yeah. proficiency in Indonesian became essential. It's almost like Indonesian became the key to unlocking opportunities. Precisely. This highlights a recurring theme in linguistics. Okay. Language as a form of social capital. Interesting. But what's particularly fascinating about Indonesian is that this push for standardization yeah. didn't erase regional diversity. That's intriguing. Yeah. How do you reconcile the standardization of a language? That's a great question. With the preservation of its regional variation. That's the beauty of Indonesian. The text distinguishes between yeah, right. standard Indonesian, right. which you'd encounter in formal settings like textbooks and speeches, right. and vernacular Indonesian, the language spoken in everyday life. So are these vernaculars significantly different from standard Indonesian? Not entirely. Think of them as like regional flavors of oh, yeah. Indonesian infused with unique words, phrases, even accents from local languages. Gotcha. Someone from Jakarta, for example, okay. might speak a vernacular Indonesian heavily influenced by Batawi, okay. a local Malay Creole. So while everyone is communicating in Indonesian, yes. it's infused with these personal touches yeah. based on their regional and cultural background. Yes. That's actually really beautiful. It's like this blend of unity and diversity. Exactly. This creates this vibrant linguistic tapestry yeah. where standard Indonesian acts as this common thread, yeah. while regional variations add their own unique patterns and colors. Right. It demonstrates that linguistic unity and diversity aren't mutually exclusive. Yeah. They can coexist mm -hmm. and even enrich each other. This has been so enlightening. Okay. I want to switch gears a bit and talk about Indonesian literature. Okay, yeah. I imagine it must be just as diverse it and is. rich as the language itself. 
Indonesian literature is this treasure trove yeah. reflecting the country's multifaceted cultural landscape. Mm. It encompasses everything from traditional oral storytelling wow. to contemporary novels that grapple with modern day issues. Wow, so interesting. And what's fascinating is how intertwined the development of Indonesian literature is with the language's rise right. as a national language. Tell me more about that. How did the two kind of evolve together? Remember how we talked about the early 20th century yeah. and the movement to establish Indonesian as a unifying force? Right, right. This period also witnessed a surge yeah. in Indonesian language literature. Oh, wow. Writers recognized the power of uh, this language yeah. to reach a wider audience uh, and express a shared Indonesian identity. So they were using literature as a tool to kind of shape the nation's narrative. Precisely. And it was incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. The text mentions literary giants like Pramoidia, Anantator, okay. and Cheryl Anwar, okay. whose works explored themes of colonialism, independence, social justice. Wow. Their writing resonated really deeply with Indonesians from all walks of life, mm -hmm. solidifying Indonesian status, not just as a language of daily communication, right. but as this powerful medium for artistic expression. You've definitely piqued my interest. I'm adding some Indonesian literature yes. to yeah. my reading list for sure. You should. This deep dive has given me a whole new appreciation Good. for the Indonesian language, its complexities, yeah. its history, and its cultural significance. It's been my pleasure yeah. guiding you through it. But remember, this is just a glimpse of into the vast world of the Indonesian language. Right. Thinking about all these layers within Indonesian, from its historical influences to its regional variations, makes me wonder about something. Yeah. What does the future hold for this language? That's a question that linguists we find endlessly fascinating yeah. because languages are constantly evolving, right? Right. They reflect the changing world around them. Yeah. And Indonesian is no exception. So what kind of changes might we see in Indonesian's future? Well, as Indonesia becomes even more integrated into like a globalized society, oh, yeah. we can anticipate further integration of English terms, right. especially in those tech and business sectors we talked about. That makes sense. Those fields are constantly generating new vocabulary. Exactly. But it goes beyond individual words. We might even see shifts yeah. in sentence structures, mm -hmm. perhaps even subtle changes in pronunciation influenced by languages yeah. that Indonesians are interacting with more frequently. It's amazing how a language's evolution never truly stops. Never. It really is. It's like this living, breathing entity. It is. Constantly adapting and changing. That's a beautiful way to put it. And it's what makes studying languages so captivating. Yeah. It's not just about analyzing, you know, words and grammar on a page. Right. It's about understanding the people, the culture, the history, yeah. all embedded within a language. This deep dive has been absolutely eye-opening. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I feel like I've gained a whole new level of appreciation, yeah. not just for Indonesian itself, mm. but for the power of language mm. to connect us, yes. to reflect who we are, right. and even to offer a glimpse into where we might be headed. It's been such a pleasure sharing these insights with you. And remember, yeah. this is really just the beginning of your exploration. Right. I encourage you to keep delving into the fascinating world of Indonesian, yeah. uncovering its hidden gems, mm -hmm. discovering what resonates most with you. I definitely will. This has been an incredible journey, and I can't wait to see where he reads. Good, good. A huge thank you to our expert for guiding us through the intricate layers of the Indonesian language. Thank you for having me. For our listeners, keep that curiosity alive, keep exploring, and we'll catch you on our next deep dive into the intricacies of our world.